Now that we've got the Gundam out of the way, now it's time to take a look at some Macross stuff. Um, a few years ago, I got my hands on their VF-1J um, that I did up in Hikaru Ichijo, or Rick Hunter, depending on whether you paid attention to uh, Macross or Robotech. Um, I did up in those colors, the, the white with red, um, and it looked, it looked great. Still one of the best uh, jet aircraft models I've ever done. And um, it's out on my shelf in the new house, um, proudly on display. Still intact. I think one of the blade antennas broke off in the past four years, but uh, otherwise it's in perfect shape and I'm really happy. It still looks great. Uh, but I also did the YF-19 from Macross Plus, which I gotta call it, that's gotta be my favorite sci-fi aircraft of all time, and debatably my favorite aircraft of all time. Just such a gorgeous looking plane. Like, even ignoring the fact that it transforms, like, just the sheer aesthetics of that thing are just beautiful. I love it. I love it. Um, but Hasegawa didn't stop there. Um, their 48 scale line didn't go over very long, but they did sneak out a couple of additional kits, including the 1S with Super and Strike parts uh, in Roy Foker colors. So I picked that up uh, during um, Hobby Link Japan's recent summer sale. Uh, I think the normal retail was somewhere in the neighborhood of around 6,000 yen. I think I paid about half that for it. Um, I don't remember exactly how much, but it was super cheap. Um, cheap enough that I was able to buy the VF-1S weapon set um, and basically got it for free uh, along with the photo etch pack. So this one's going to be a little further down the line. I'm going to get started on the Astray and the Tall Geese's, Tall Geese's, the Tall Geese 1 and 2. Eh, sometime in the next couple of weeks if I find a little time I'll work on them on the kitchen table. But this is going to be, you know, down the line, working on that in the shed once it's all outfitted. But, um, yeah, let's take a look at them. The box for the VF-1S slash A Strike slash Super Valkyrie Skull Squadron uh, is illustrated by Hida Hid Hidetaka Tenjin. It's, uh, he's actually credited right on the box cover, which is a nice touch. Um, Hase's usual fine style. It's very attractive. It's, uh, you got the uh, two Valkyries. This is um, Roy's, and this would appear to be a uh, VF-1A. It's nice to see that they did both different color schemes on the box cover, with, of course, Roy's being one of the main characters being the focal point. But you can see the big-ass boosters and uh, the missile pod or the twin blaster cannon. I'm not sure if it's a beam cannon or like a projectile firing cannon, um, but I would I would guess it's a beam cannon of some kind. But uh, in addition, you've got the big new armor on the legs, and um, I've always kind of liked the asymmetrical look of the Strike versus the Super Valkyrie, which the Super simply adds a second missile pod in place of the uh, the cannon. Um, box bottom, just some. Uh, still, some stills from the show. Uh, other side, just some photos of the completed model. Um, you can see it has a uh, universal mount latch, so you can swap out the, the missile launchers or the beam cannon on either side, or have, you know, twin missile launchers, though I don't think it includes parts for a second beam cannon, which kind of a bummer, but eh, it's not strictly canon in the show for it to have two. But very nice, very attractive looking box. And, uh, oof, some big runners of parts. So all of the additional parts, the uh, strike slash super parts, are all molded in this kind of dark, a little bit, kind of a bluish gray. Um, which is pretty much how it appeared on the show, and I like it. Um, connection points between the runners are really, really fine. I don't know how well you can make that out, but those are really tiny. Um, so it's going to be very easy to clean up uh, parts when taking them off the sprue. But uh, yeah, you got the main booster parts here. You got the inside 
uh, parts for the leg armors. You got both halves of each arm armor, and then the outside parts of each leg armor. Um, and there's lots of cutouts for additional boosters and thrusters. So there's you know thrust, thruster there, thruster there, three thrusters there, two more there, and one there, plus the huge ass booster right here. So when these things are fully equipped with uh, the super parts, they really can move. Um, we got uh, here's the uh, the main thruster booster for the super parts. Then there's one of the missile pods. You can actually see there is a cutout there, and it looks like a uh, an insert, like a barrel part for the uh, for a missile to be fed into. I don't know if there are missiles included, which it'd be kind of a drag if there's not. But um, anyway, there's the mount plate to attach the boosters. There's the uh, the other side. Um, so it looks like they can actually be hot swapped. So you could build both missile pods and a uh, uh, the blaster cannon and swap them whenever you want. You might damage the paint a little bit, but it'll be covered up most of the time anyway. So it looks like they can be just switched around. Lots and lots of thrusters. Uh, I think this is the ball joint for the main booster, so it can be articulated. Um, and uh, cannon barrel for uh, for the blaster cannon. And uh, this runner from here over is identical to what we just looked at. Uh, on the other side, we've got the uh, blaster cannon, um, main barrel uh, attachment points. You got the hinge because in uh, Batroid, a robot mode, the cannon can hinge down over the uh, Valkyrie's shoulder, so it can fire forward instead of straight up. A um, little bit of dust on the parts. Um, more components for the uh, leg armors. I think these are the inserts for the um, uh, arm armor. They fit on the underside. I think this would be the uh, inserts for the thrusters, the, the, big, uh, the big motors that fit into the back. Um, and uh, sensor for, uh, for the cannon. As is standard for Hasegawa, just that molding detail is intense. Like, just look at that rivet detail, those little tiny panels. Just intense. Like, those little, the little rivet holes, probably, you know, a fifth of a millimeter, maybe even less in diameter. So that's it for the super parts. Uh, now we're getting into the fuselage. Uh, main upper fuselage. Uh, cockpit tub, uh, which also has the landing gear bay on the bottom side, lower half of the fuselage, and uh, nose cone, which is detachable. Um, I think, in fact, mine on my VF1J that I did years ago, I never did glue it in, because there's a little rail here. It can slide out uh, at any time, so you can pull it out for uh, transportation, um, which is cool, because I was able to do that when it was in storage. Uh, there's a speed brake here, which can be displayed as uh, stowed or deployed. Um, of course, with the super parts attached, it won't be able to be deploy, uh, deployed because the super parts are attached and the, there's a whole panel that folds down over that, so it's just covered up. Um, not sure what some of these are. I think these are part of the front landing gear. Um, and then you've got the option to display the gun pod with a hand grip or... Um, the mount to attach it to the arms. Not really sure why they bother with the hand grip, because there's no hands, obviously, to carry it. And um, the gun pod is in collapsed mode, so it's kind of a, a useless addition. Uh, leg and engine parts. One of my favorite parts of doing the other, the VF1J, was detailing up one of these engines. I left the armor panel off to really show off the molding detail in there, that's just incredible. Like, so much detail in there to really show off. So many wires and pipes and conduits and... Like, it's all nonsense. It's all made-up, fictional kind of, uh, kind of engines, but it's really neat. Um, in addition, these little divots here are uh, maneuvering thrusters. They have corresponding little holes on the outside that, uh, on the outer panels that uh, they match up with. Uh, you've also got the uh, engine, uh, the actual motor exhausts. These are the uh, uh, wing gearing system. 
Um, like the uh, F-14, the uh, wings do sweep uh, on these, and they are linked. Uh, nose gear, I'm guessing. Um, rear landing gear bays with uh, engine detail. Those will be fun to paint up. Um, some vent parts. I'm guessing these go somewhere in the uh, the intakes uh, on either side of the cockpit. And uh, rear landing gear, landing gear door, part of the cockpit, um, intakes, uh, but no uh, intake fans uh, are evident on this runner. And here we have some of the modified parts for the Strike slash Super Valkyrie. The leg has a bend in it, whereas the uh, VF1J, the standard type Valkyrie, had just a straight leg. Uh, this one has a bend in it to accommodate the larger armors on the legs, so it has to uh, it has to lower down a little bit to make room. Uh, in addition, there's the alternate uh, backpack piece, which actually folds up over the back of the Valkyrie and allows for the super and strike parts to attach to it. You get tail fins, which fold up uh, flat. Um, some uh, Missiles, I'm guessing these are probably missiles that would fit in the barrels of the uh, missile pods, so that is actually a nice touch. They've included, looks like four on this runner, no, eight on this runner, and this runner, uh, nope, nope, no, never mind. So yeah, there's one for each barrel on, uh, on uh, each of the missile pods. But yeah, uh, again, like the detailing on here is just incredible. Um, more really nice. You can get some kind of rivet detail and some really fine panel lining in there. Um, on the wings, um, there's uh, little pilot holes that you can drill out so that you can attach underwing stores. There's none included with the kit, but there is an option set, and uh, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Um, and I'll probably add you know, a couple of missiles or bombs or something under it when I do this. Uh, fins for the, on the legs, uh, on the engines. You got your gun pod, which, as I said, is designed in stowed configuration, in collapsed configuration. When it's in batroid mode, in robot mode, it actually extends about uh, maybe this much extra, and there's some mechanical detailing in there. Um, not really sure why it does that, it just it looked neat on the show, and um, it's not replicated on this model, so I'm not sure why, as I said, why they would include the uh, hand grip part. <laughs> uh, we're getting into some of the more version-specific parts now. This is the VF-1S head, which, if you ever grew up with the Transformers like I did, you will, might recognize as the head sported by the Transformer known as Jetfire in the toy line, but never in the comics or the cartoon. Long story, I won't bother to explain why, but uh, um, this head always kind of stood out to me as uh, a really awesome design. Um, but yeah, there's the mounts for the four little beam cannons, there's the head top upper plate, and the lower plate which accommodates the head uh, in the lower fuselage. Each different head has its own unique uh, surround, so that it fits essentially flush. Because um, the head can actually deploy a little bit in in fighter mode as a uh, as a turret. Uh, here we have the VF-1A head, which a lot more insect-like. Um, actually, it has a very similar aesthetic to the strike part turret. Um, you know, extends way back. There's a big hinge here. It has a single camera eye in the center and has a single blaster that fits into the center of it and then this panel fits over top and then again like the S it has a simple uh, cutout to fit it in the fuselage. Uh, cockpit detail parts. Um, here we have the uh, the HUD, the control panel. Um, really nice. A little bit of dry brushing on my other one really brought that out. It's a little bit of flash! I'm surprised to see there's a little bit of flash on the rear view mirrors, and actually a little bit around the entire part. It's kind of a bummer, but it'll be easy to clean up. Um, looks like uh, throttle and flight stick. Um, 
I think these would be maybe the boosters for the ejection seat and uh, the HUD here. Um, seat cushion, seat back, seat side rails, and uh, the rest of it there. Yeah. Yeah, that flash is really a bummer, but um, otherwise, looks fantastic. Ah, your pilot figure. This, I believe, is the same pilot figure that came with the VF1J, um, but really nicely molded. I have always loved that helmet. You know, there's the, uh, the little uh, visor on the top. There's like the little shroud on the bottom. I kind of wish they'd included an optional second head that didn't have the face plate though, so you could actually paint the pilot's face. But eh, no dice on that. Um, yeah, you got your uh, pair of arms, one of which has a uh, flight stick partially molded to it, the other one does not. You got your legs and your torso. Very nicely done. A lot of different pieces, so it'll be uh, interesting to fit together to make all of the parts go where they're supposed to. Um, and uh, engine parts. So we got an intake fan. Uh, this is actually one of the gears for the wings. We just got some little inserts and some thrusters here and there. Um, insert parts for the wheels. This is one of the arms. Um, uh, thruster vector parts. Um, they uh, are actually form the feet in Batroid mode and uh, sadly one of them came loose in the runner but it appears to be fine. Um, just a little bit of sprue scarring on it but it should be easy to snip off. And then the, uh, the rest of the arm joints. Um, yeah. Uh, landing gear wheels as well. Then we have uh, an identical runner again. Uh, this one does not have uh, the broken off uh, foot part. And then you got your clear pieces for the uh, strike and super parts. This would be for the uh, for the sensor. And I'm not sure what these ones are. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I honestly don't know. But they're molded in this kind of orangey amber color. Speaking of clear parts. Uh, we have visors for all the different heads. This is the uh, 1S head, this is the 1J visor, and um, I think this is the 1A, and this is, I'm not sure the number, but it's, I think it's for the trainer type. I don't think that kit was ever released. And you've got two different canopies, uh, one of which is a very smooth-sided canopy, uh, more akin to how it appeared in the, the series, and then there's a more of a bubble-sided canopy. Um, has a bit more of a flare out to it, which is more akin to how it appeared in the uh, in the film uh, Macross. Do you remember Love? And this is the canopy that I would prefer to use because it's I, I used it on my other Valkyrie, and it was much easier to uh, to display that way as well as to mask. But you got this huge seam line over the top. I think I complained about that on the. Uh, the 1J when I did my unboxing of that, but like, look at the size of that seam line! Oh god, it's awful! It's horrendous. I don't know how this ever passed muster with Hasegawa, but whatever. It'll be not too difficult to fix. You know, get out, go at it with a hobby knife and scrape it down so it's smooth, and then polish it with a, sand, a couple of sanding sticks, and then um, hit it with some uh, some uh, future floor polish to uh, really shine it up. Uh, there's some wing insert, clear parts, some other random clear parts, I'm not sure. I think this goes in the front landing gear door, and these go in the rear landing gear doors. Um, very comprehensive decal set. Decal, decal, whatever. Uh, you've got your Roy Foker colors, you've got your Hikaru colors, um, but also I think the more generic uh, the F1A also used the red. Um, and then uh, I think blue is Max and green is Miria. Or they might just be generic colors, I'm not really sure. But uh, you've also got all of your like uh, air intakes and your Macross logos and your stripes and uh, canopy framing. Uh, UN Spacey logos, more stripes, no step. Printing on here is just outstanding. Um, see if you can really get a look at that. Like... Yeah, probably not quite coming up. There, there, that one says Beware of Blast. I'm not sure what the one above it says. Can't quite make it out.
But you've got an option for a, a decal for the control panel for the pilot's shoulders and wrists. Then you've got the uh, Skull Squadron logos uh, with and without uh, black lining around them. More Macross logos. This is a very large and very comprehensive decal set. Uh, and finally you've got your instructions printed all in grayscale. Um, starts with the pilot and the cockpit, then the nose cone gives you the uh, uh, option of which canopy to use, then onto the landing gear and fuselage, uh, detailing on how the um, wings, the wing mechanism works, and then you got the um, tail fin assembly folded up over the back. Um, assembly of the wings, assembly of the various armors, which, oh, I forgot, there's actually two little missiles that fit into the arm armor, um, which in jet mode actually face backwards, so I'm not sure if they ever use them in the series for that purpose, but they'd be great for taking out uh, rear-facing enemies. Um, uh, and legs, engines, landing gear details, some marking stuff. Uh, options for how to wh which head to use, uh, gun pod, leg armor, uh, and then on to the strike and super booster parts. And yes, see, there's the, the little missiles that fit into those little bo uh, little barrels. So each of these pods would presumably have, I don't know, a, a dozen or so on either side, so probably six missiles per tube, um, which would mean. 24 per pod, so 48 micro missiles uh, if you're equipped with both missile pods. Then assembly of the rear boosters and final assembly of the kit. And um, your marking guide. And here's what I was talking about how the leg has to kind of take a step down to accommodate the, uh, the leg armor because it bulks up the legs so much, so it has to kind of bend down a little bit. But uh, yeah, she's a beauty of an aircraft. Um, always been a fan of the uh, the Valkyrie, but wait, there's more. Da da da. Uh, Hasegawa also released a photo etch set for this kit, which I was able to get a deal on with the uh, uh, Hobby Link Japan sale as well. So you've got your photo etched. Not sure if these are like aluminum or what, but they're definitely not brass because brass is not silver. Um, I think inserts for the uh, feet slash thruster parts. You got new blade antennas. Um, oh, these are new panels for the outside edges of the hands, like the little uh, plates that come down over the hands when they retract into the uh, arms in Batroid mode. Even more blade antennas, uh, new fans. Um, rails for the canopy, I'm guessing? Uh, HUD details, a lot of stuff on here. I'm not really sure even what a lot of it is. Um, really fine little grating there. I mean, we'll take a look how tiny that grating is. All this uh, is really greatly, really well detailed. But there's also this second little part, which is actually pre-painted. What the hell? It's actually tampographed with uh, with printing for the side control panels. You've also got uh, seat belt harnesses and various other stuff for the cockpit. So, this should be interesting. I'm no expert when it comes to photo etch, but these should be really neat to uh, assemble. And finally, we have the Valkyrie weapon set, which includes all you see here, except for the Valkyrie itself. Um, art on this was likewise done by Hidetaka Tenjin. I'm actually going to move this out of the way, so I'll just set this down. And um, let's have a look. So what you get are basically three sets of identical runners. Um, these are the micro-missile launchers, just a simple box with uh, a little uh, five-tube missile launcher on the front. And uh, each of these, from what I understand, holds a similar missile, maybe a little bit bigger to the ones in the super armor parts. Um, and they're not very big, and each, one, each tube can probably hold three to four missiles. So we'll assume... 15 per uh, per pod, and this set gives you four of them. So you can seriously upgun your Valkyrie just by using the micro missile pods. 
Next up, you have three of these. Um, so you've got two reactor missiles. They're, I think, basically a kind of nuke um, featured in the show. And uh, so you get two per runner, and you get three runners, so you got six of them. Um, not a lot of detail, but that eh, should be interesting to go together. Um, some good panel lining on on there on a couple of places. Kind of hard to see. Uh, but in addition, you get uh, three of these little missiles as well uh, on this runner, and then a bunch of micro-missiles. I'm not sure if these actually fit in the micro-missile pods or not. I would assume so. But, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of missiles that come with this thing. And uh, you get three complete ones of this runner, and then uh, another half runner with three more of the little missiles and more of the micro missile uh, uh, units on it. So that's a lot of damn missiles. So three of these, that's 12 of the small missiles, four of the big missile, multi missile pods, and six of the reactor bombs. Uh, you got a small uh, marking set. Doesn't have a lot on it, just indicates what each missile is. You got the UUM-7, I think those are the micro-missiles. The RMS-1, I'm guessing those are the standard, more conventional missiles. And then these are for the reactor bombs, and then you've got just stripes. Um, and then an assembly guide. Um, yeah, UUM-7 micro-missile pod RMS reactor uh, bomb, okay, so I got those mixed up, and the AMM-1 missile. And it gives you a guide for what goes where. Uh, so if you want to have the uh, reactor bombs, they would go, you know, on the three outermost, um, and then the one innermost, uh, what do you call it, the hard points. Or if you want to have the regular missiles or the micro-missile pods, it just says where each one of them goes. So. And then your very, very basic instruction guide, it shows you where you would want to drill out for each of the uh, different hard points. Um, and, oh, actually, this is that's damn cool. Okay, they actually give you a little swivel pivot. So when you drill them out, you set this inside, you don't glue it, you glue it to the rack. So as you swivel the wings, you can actually still swivel the missile racks. I did not expect that. That's actually really awesome. Um, and then, yeah, so you got your uh, missile rack assembly. Each rack can hold three missiles. Or you've got the reactor bomb racks, which can hold two, or a single rack, which holds one, and then your uh, micro-missile pods, which, yeah, have five of the little micro-missiles. So it looks like it can probably hold, eh, there's probably room for three in each tube. Um, so, yeah, probably 15 of those micro-missiles in each one. And then you've got your painting and marking guide, and uh, how, how, they would, how they would look attached to one of the Valkyries. So... So that's that. So out of the four kits that I've uh, showed off in the last couple days, I think I think this is the one I'm the most eager to uh, to assemble. Um, the drag of it is that it's gonna be a while before I'm able to get to it, simply because of you know the shed. I mean, we're still far from done our renovations downstairs. Um, we've got the walls are framed, the floor is in. We have to put up drywall, we have to carpet, we have to do a new ceiling, um, and we have to paint. So, and we have to install new windows. Thank you! <laughs> My girlfriend's talking to me from the other room. Um, so yeah, we got a lot of that to do yet before I can even think about working out in the shed. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so this will be sitting in a uh, in a box in my closet for probably a few months. I might not even get to it until next spring. But, you know, it was on sale. It was, you know, a sale that I couldn't pass up. And, um, you know, it, it, it gave me the excuse to order a couple of other things that uh, I was after as well. I got a couple of uh, Masterpiece Transformers at the same time. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, um... A lot of my kits didn't make it out here from Victoria. I think they're probably still sitting in my parents' uh, storage room. Um, but a lot of them did. Um, so I've got a pretty decent stash already uh, built up. Um, I'm eager to start working on them. 
Um, I've uh, I've already assembled the ashtray, and it turned out really nice. It's a nice little kit, you know, for a real grade kit. I'm not the biggest fan of the real grade series, but I am a big fan of the ashtray. So, you know, one trumps the other, I guess. And it was it's a nice little kit, and I'll probably try and get some work done on the tall geese, uh, one and two. Eh, sometime in the next little bit if I can find some free time in the afternoon after I get off work or on a weekend or whatever, but yeah, this is the one that I really was eager to get, but knew from the beginning I would it would be ages before I could do anything to it or about it. Um, but it'll be nice to uh, to work on it. It'll be probably a, you know a fairly in-depth project, probably take me a couple of weeks. Um, so I'll uh, when I do get around to building it, I will definitely do uh, a build up series on it. Um, unfortunately, I need to find a new forum to do uh, build-up reviews on. Escale Model is the forum that I've been associated with for oof, over ten years. Um, the admin for that forum, Peter, decided to close it down recently, much to my chagrin, because Oh, if I had known in advance he was going to do that, I would have, you know, saved some of my write-ups for reviews that I did years ago, like my uh, 350th Enterprise or any of my other aircraft reviews, especially the ones that are models that I don't have anymore. Um, when I moved out of my condo, I kind of just cleaned house, you know. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't transport a lot of them, so I just said, screw it, and tossed them. You know, there was nowhere I could put them. They were too big to put in boxes or in bins to store, so I just, I just chucked them. But you know, it is what it is. Um, it's the life of a of a hobbyist. You know, you can't always live in the past. But I've still got my photos, at least. So, you know. But Peter, if you're watching this, um, please send me a message. Um, let me know if you have any archives of that forum kicking around anywhere, because I'd really like to read up on some of my old uh, build-up reviews. Um, if not, whatever. You know, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to be working on some uh, renovation videos over the next little bit, since there's not really much else I can do in the way of modeling uh, for a while, at least not in terms of video making. Um, so I'm going to be focusing on the renovation videos for a while. My girlfriend and I, we shot some footage uh, a few days ago uh, of us down in the basement. And I'm probably going to post some of that over the next few days. Um, see what I can do with some of that footage and um, see how it turns out. But anyway, thanks everyone out there for watching and uh, happy modeling.